Pavini Mittal, our correspondent standing by at the French Embassy in the capital. Hello to you, Pavini. Um, what have been some of the major themes during Emmanuel Macron's visit to India? The biggest theme, or rather the sentiment that has emerged, is that of friendship. And the symbols are everywhere. You know, the streets of Delhi are lined with posters of Macron and Modi, both of them uh, shaking hands, uh, sort of hugging each other. Then we've seen pictures and videos of them having tea at a roadside stall uh, in the city of Jaipur. Uh, uh, you know, so... Uh, You've seen that everywhere, and, and this is also when India is marking, or rather India and France are marking 25 years of the strategic partnership signed between the two countries in 1998, and it's clear that Macron is here to sort of elevate um, elevate that. Now, earlier this morning, Macron made an announcement of, about attracting about 30,000 students to France by the year 2030. That number currently stands at 10,000, so that is an ambitious goal, but underlining all these relationships relations like in all diplomatic relations are business ties. Um, India is the world's largest importer of uh, military equipment and France is the second largest uh, supplier. So that is one of the strongest pillars of this alliance that we're uh, seeing being celebrated today. Yeah, trade and defense may be topping that. What, what does India's Narendra Modi want out of this visit? You know, this visit comes at an interesting time for India on the international stage. India has had, you know, a banner year when it comes to its reputation and accomplishments in terms of how the world sees it. You had a successful moon landing last year, a successful G20 summit. Then Prime Minister Modi uh, has been invited uh, last year for a state visit to the White House. You know, he was the guest of honor at Bastille Day Parade in France as well. So, so, so... All of that is also being celebrated. The other thing we've seen with this government in particular is that when it comes to international events like these, it really loves the pomp and show. You know, uh, visiting uh, dignitaries and leaders are often treated as rock stars. There's a lot of money spent on sort of celebrating the so-called friendship. Prime Minister Modi has taken two leaders on separate occasions to uh, a cricket stadium, the largest cricket stadium in the world, which is in the state of Gujarat. The stadium is named after Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the two leaders have been uh, former president of the US, uh, Donald Trump, and the current prime minister of Australia, Albanese. So, you know, a lot of the effort to sort of celebrate this friendship is also directed towards elevating Prime Minister Modi as sort of the global leader. Yeah, France, like India, officially a secular country, but critics regularly accuse Modi and his right-wing Hindu nationalist BJP party of violating the country's commitment to secularism. Yeah, you know... Uh Western countries have often been asked this question, and even though human rights groups have said what you said, that Modi's track record on minority rights and human rights has been deteriorating since he took office in 2014, leaders have not condemned or rebuked or called out the country for this uh, directly, at least. Um, and in fact, it's interesting today, uh, 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 Macron is scheduled to visit a Muslim shrine in the city of New Delhi. Now, this is a popular spot. It is a well-known shrine. Thousands of people visit it every week. But it comes at an interesting time when you speak of spec uh, secularism, because just this week, Prime Minister Modi inaugurated a massive Hindu temple in India. Uh, this temple has been built on the same grounds that a mosque stood for centuries and which was demolished by a Hindu nationalist mob in 1992. In fact, Modi even gifted Macron a replica of this temple uh, 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 during the visit. And while Hindu nationalists and even the government calls this, you know, a new era for the country, there are legal experts and political commentators we've spoken to who say that this raises serious questions about India's commitment and this government's commitment to secularism, particularly when it comes to rights of of minority groups like Muslims. All right, Pavini, thank you very much. Pavini Mittal reporting from New Delhi.